Ladies and gentlemen, let's make welcome the icon for societal evolution in this rapidly changing world. Dr. Roma Pabankita. Thank you and thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. And good morning to you all. Please, I have a question. How many of you have a smartphone here? I think all of you, right? How much have you ever made from your smartphone? Plenty. Plenty. That is great, actually. Well, another question, please. What has come to your mind when you have the word technology? Technology. Well, many people find change. technology a change. Thank you. Many people see technology as is only about computers and internet and networking, social medias. That is what people think about technology. But technology is about common sense. That common sense is what tells us what to do. And that common sense is what tells us how to utilize the power of technology to change ourselves, to change the community, in fact, even change other people. I remember some times ago, many years back, I started my studies in Polytechnic Council. I applied for computer, computer science, because of my love for the technology and computers. But luckily, when my admission is out, it says I got admission to study agricultural science. Well, I still feel happy and optimistic because I stay home for a very long time. I want to go to school. I want to read. Then I went, I just go register and then start going to school. And it was so nice because I meet a lot of people who are within around Kesna and then within around the neighboring states. In my semester one, I got another admission to study in Malaysia. My dreams, information technology. It was so, I was so happy actually. I left the country and go to Malaysia for the first time, leaving my family and my friends. When I was there, everything looked different to me because the people, the society, and even the school, I'm not used to it. But what I always think in my mind is about my friends. We always keep in touch through phone and social media platform that, Hi, how are you? How was there? Like, I always think about them. And those people, when I was polytechnic, and I look, there's a lot of brilliant students more than me. Some of my friends are very smart, actually. I can't even imagine that if they have a very good student like me, they can do much and much better than me. I attended conferences, one or two conferences in Malaysia, and that gave me a sense of hope that I can bring my friends to study in Malaysia and to study even other part of the world. But how? Remember, I go to Malaysia for uh, other self sponsor not scholarship. And I don't have anybody in the government that will support me with maybe a lot of scholarship to support those of my friends. After attending one or two conferences, I get to understand that there's a lot of opportunities out there. It's only that there's an information gap between those opportunities providers and the opportunity seekers. And that's how I started, I developed a project called Opportunities Hub. It started with rumor, of, I think, Babaita Rumor the Call as a blog where I share information about scholarships. And those of my friends that I left, through that platform, they applied some of the scholarships in Malaysia and two of them for the scholarship. And I was so much happy when I see them. I went immediately to the airport to pick them up. I was so much happy that they made it. And some of them got a scholarship to study in other countries. Because of that platform I created. And some other people, I get to understand when I was in Kansana, I started my NGO as Ariwa Youth Awareness Initiative Forum. And it's very difficult for me to run a project. Why? Because of we're not financially good. We seek for donation from public and the outcome is very low. We are expecting hundred thousand, but we get five to ten thousand. It's very low actually. And I remember that how I struggle. You remember that we have a lot of comrades, upcoming comrades, that want to change the society. 
the community, but they don't have a chance. They don't have access to that chance. So through that, and then you can get contact from people who need your service because uh, nobody's going to do this service. Because of the power of technology, uh, somebody from, from US, from everywhere around the world can hire you to do the work. But if you don't know you, you need an avenue for that. I'm trying to solve a problem for unemployed graduates like me. Because I, I have a, I have a skills. And most of you know in this room, I mean, you have your own skills. But you don't have a space in market, a market ecosystem to sell your skills. And that's why I created that. And many people through our platform get their jobs. Many people through our platforms get a scholarships, and many people through all our platforms are getting funding from their NGOs. And you should know that. As I said earlier that we all want to make money, right? Who does not want money? All of us, right? The question I have for you is, what problems do you want to solve or you are inspiring to solve? Let me tell you how I run my NGO. In my NGO, uh, we help people get scholarships. We help people get jobs. I did it for free, absolutely 100% free. I, and the people ask me, you always run project for free. How do you make money through that uh, project? Right? I remember one of my friends is in this room. The last time we had a meeting, I, I was like, OK, we have to run a project for free. He said, no. Uh, you are a profit. That's why you are doing project for free. I have a family, so we have to pick up on our <laughs> However, he's right. There's a lot of companies that pay money for the service you rendered. I'm aware, most of you know about the Google AdSense program. And most of you are aware of the YouTube program. They pay a lot. People create just funny online platforms. You watch all the jobs you are seeing online. You, you think that people don't have a job. No, they are smart. They use their common sense to make money. You laugh while well, they laugh in their pocket. A lot of people, like Linda Ikeji, we know about her. She utilizes the blogging style that she has a passion for it. Today she's a multimillionaire, right? The last time I was watching YouTube, you know this guy is, uh, uh, what is his name? There's one comedian guy, I know, he said he make, in every month he make almost 10 to 5 million, every month, through content development. We all have a content to share, I know that, I can see your faces, I know you have a content to share, but how do you share that your content to the question, right? Okay. Listen, think about this. I give you one minute to think. There's a lot of problems within your community. In fact, even yourself, how do you intend to change your true technology? How do you do that? Yesterday, I was sitting with one of our speakers here. She said, I hate technology. And I feel bad. She said, I don't like technology. I don't like computers. In fact, I get irritated when I see a computer. I said, what about now? She said, now I love technology, I love computers, because they help me. Technology helps students a lot. If we have a student in this room, there's a lot of platforms you can utilize to help yourself. Running a free courses, like a yearly course, there's a lot of free courses that you need to utilize in the power of technology. Some time ago, I understand that uh, we have a meeting with the uh, business owners in Tesla, especially the student, I get to understand that there are uh, thousands of businesses offline, more than online, in Tesla State. So what, what, what do you think we need to do is to solve that problem? During pandemic, everywhere is closed, and people need, need to eat because they don't have the space to sell their product. That's why I developed a project called Shopee NG as a free e-commerce platform whereby you upload their products for free, you create an account, you upload their product for free, you sell them for free, no permission. You sell, you buy all them for free. I was trying to solve, I was trying to give you a free shop online whereby you created an account and then you sell them for free, no permission attached to it. However, it is the same platform that you you digitalize your local businesses. Even this uh, Uli Uli and Akara around the road, you can digitalize it. 
people can make order. You, it's not only the people within your community can do that. But you need a platform. And that is a platform I want you to create. Please, think about this. There's a lot of web designers. They said that it requires a lot of coding. It doesn't work. WordPress is giving you opportunity to do everything. I used to do code. I found out that I'm just wasting my time. WordPress is giving me the opportunity to do that. So think about this. In your own self, what did you do? What did you sell? If you are an activist, you can use the technology to raise your voice. Millions of people will see you. If you are into business, you can create a, uh, an e-commerce platform for yourself to sell your product. If you are a student, uh, you can go to some of the free learning skills, uh, free learning management content online. You can learn from there. Right? And the last thing is, you know, you are watching me, most of the people watch me here. And more than I want to say, even though most of the people will disagree with me. I'm calling for the Nigerian government to combine our universities into vocational skill centers. Because we only learn and get certificates. And good thing is that some of us graduated with first class, but they spent more than six years without getting a job. I rather graduated with third class with skills than first class. I have this argument with some of people on social media platform. I say, first class is useless. If you don't have a skill, if you graduate with first class, you don't have a job, you just go home and then first class. Where is your first class? Skills development is, the, is, is better. Even if the universities cannot be converted to the vocational skill centers, I'm calling for you, the student, use your common sense. Think that school, you only have a relationship with school when you're a student. When you're graduated, nobody promises you a job. You know that, right? And nobody promises you uh, any incentive. Nobody promises you whatever you wish to be in future. Nobody promises you that. You are on your own now. So what do you do? And most of us have a free time while we are in university. You know that. We have a free time. Nobody sends us no. We have a free time. That is the only time we have a free. So use that free time. Utilize the power of technology, digital technology and create something for yourself. Learn digital skills. Learn how many certificates. Because at the end of the day, your degree may not help you, but your certificate will help you. Very much. One more thing is that I started my presentation with Do you have a smartphone? And you said yes. How much do you make with a smartphone? Some people say ah, small, some people say nothing. Right? What is the difference between a phone of 200,000 and a phone of 5,000? What is the difference, please? I just want to know the difference. Smart. We call them smartphone. But you should know, Android, even technology is a smartphone. iPhone is a smartphone. So they're all the same, actually. You may call the small phone for 5,000, there are make calls. The smartphone was not just designed to carry an iPhone and hold it like this. That was not the purpose of iPhones and the smartphones. The purpose is for you to ease your work. We know that before, in your office, you need a dictionary, you need a typewriter, you need a printer, you need a lot of things. But today, with a single laptop, you can run an office. You know that, right? And you know that. Today, you don't need to carry uh, cameras. You don't need to carry dictionaries if you are going somewhere. With your smartphone, you can do all that. Which means they are telling you, it's a revolution telling you that you can use your smartphone to help yourself for work office. However, you can still use it to help yourself to make money. Some of us know that. But we are too lazy to utilize this opportunity. We are too lazy. We say that it takes time. I remember during a program, a lady, I was telling them about the power of uh, YouTube. We can make thousands of millions of money. A lady said to me, but sir, it's too difficult. I have to look for one thousand viewers. I have to do this, I have to do that. And I said, you want to make money? Easy way. You think that all those people that make money online, you think it's Yahoo, whatever you think. You think that it's easy, you just click and then you make money? It takes me almost eight years before I started the from some of my online projects. Eight years working on them. And most of those projects, I did design them for people, people, all of us, to utilize them. Achieving your dreams is not easy. It's not just a one click. It's, you cannot see somebody enjoying his money and be like, I, I just want to be like you. Please tell me which bottom do I need to click to make that money? No. It takes time. 
I'm not saying this to discourage you. I'm saying this to tell you the fact that we have more work to do. And I have to tell you that we have more work to do. But technology is our work. And the last thing is, before I go, I want you to go home. Before, before you eat today after this program, go home. Take a five minutes. What is your problem in your community and how can you solve it? If you do that, I'm ready to support you. I'm ready to give you whatever resources, the tools you need to utilize that. But remember, technology is the key. Thank you so much. Thank you.